He was a solid player, and he was on the fast track to the NFL. A couple more decent years, and he was going to be a multi-millionaire. Fast forward time into 2004 as a sophomore, little did he know and everybody else know, this was going to be his last year of ever playing college football. You see the mugshot. I don't want to kick a man when he's down. I don't want to judge a book by its cover. But he doesn't look good. He looks rough. Over 20 plus years ago, there was a running back who played for Lexington High School in the state of South Carolina who was demolishing anybody and everybody in his way. He was as close to unstoppable as it gets. When he left his high school, he was the state's record holder for most rushing yards with 9,076 and most career touchdowns with 127. You're probably thinking he was a highly regarded player in his state, and you'd be right to a certain extent, but it wasn't just his state. He was a highly touted and regarded player in the nation. He was the number one player in the state of South Carolina, the number one overall running back in the entire country, and the number ninth best overall player in the country. He had the world in the palm of his hands. The only thing that was going to stop him from achieving his dream of making it to the NFL was himself. You probably know where I'm going with this and what I'm about to say next. He never made it to the NFL. As a matter of fact, I'll take it a step farther. I'd be willing to bet 90% of you didn't even know this guy existed. Also, I got through this in there, he wasn't even close to making it to the NFL. When he was in college, he got kicked off of his team for doing some, let's just say, not so good things. He messed up big time, point blank period. There's many questions people have been asked about this guy even till this day. But however, it all circles back to the one. And I mean the one big question we're going to try to get to the bottom of in today's video. What really happened? to Demetrius Summers. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you are having a great day. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. Major shout out to Twitterfingers5.0 for requesting this video. I'm just picking out this comment in particular. I've seen a bunch of you recommend this video, so major shout out to each and every single one of you. You know who you are. When I first saw his name in the comment section, I bumped it up immediately to priority number one. We gotta make this video. Fortunately, I didn't know a little bit about his story and what happened before doing the research for this video, but the one thing I've always found so fascinating about it is if you live outside of the state of South Carolina, you don't even know this guy. If you're curious as to why I'm so excited for this video and why I bumped it up to priority number one, it's because I love telling stories that people have never heard of before. There's also not too much information about this guy anywhere, so I had to do a lot of digging and research. I have jibber jabber enough. Strap in, buckle up, get you a snack, get you a popcorn, get your favorite meal you like to eat when you watch a video, because trust me, I do the same thing. But all right, Matt, blah, 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 shut the crap up. Now I'm further ado. Let's get into it. All right, first things first. Demetrius Summers. No, it's not Demetrius, it's Demetrius. He's the main subject of today's video. And like we talked a little bit about in the intro, he went to Lexington High School in South Carolina. You know how I like to do these high school glory days, don't want to bore you, he was one of the best players in the nation. Over 9,000 career rushing yards and 127 touchdowns. Not bad. For that reason alone, it's why he was regarded as a 99 overall recruit, top 10 in the nation, number one running back, number one player in the state, and a five star. All your big time schools wanted him, but he decided to commit and sign with South Kakalaki. When he got onto campus in 2003, Things were great. He was named to the SEC All-Freshman team, and as a freshman, in 11 games played, he had 124 carries for 638 yards. That's over 5 yards a pop with 3 touchdowns. He was a solid player, and he was on the fast track to the NFL. A couple more decent years, and he was going to be a multi-millionaire. Fast forward time into 2004 as a sophomore, little did he know and everybody else know, this was going to be his last year of ever playing college football. Only appeared in nine games in which he had 88 carries for 487 rushing yards, averaging improved it to 5.5 yards per carry with only one rushing touchdown. I guess you could say our story is going to get interesting relatively quick, so you might want to buckle up. There's not an easy way to say this. Demetrius Summers got dismissed from the South Carolina football team. What was really strange about this is at first, Steve Spurrier, the head coach at the time, he wouldn't come out and say why. The only thing he said is he got dismissed for violating team rules, which I think we can all agree is extremely vague. When you say a player got dismissed for violating team rules, that could be anything. But you had to assume back then, and even now, it was a big time deal because this was one of your better players. One key piece of information you need to know is Steve Spurrier had close to a zero tolerance policy for off the field problems. 
He was notorious for being like that at Florida, and he was the same way early on at South Carolina. The only thing he ever said about it is this official statement right here. Quote unquote, there are certain policies and rules that our student athletes must follow, and unfortunately, Demetrius chose to violate those. That's where we are with this, and we'll move on from here. To prove my point talking about how he had a zero tolerance policy, check out this quote as well. This was in response to a reporter referencing how he's laying down the law. I like to think so. We're not going to have problem guys. I hope I don't have to run anybody off, but sometimes that's helpful. You can like how Steve Spurrier coached his team. You cannot like it, but the one thing I've always respected is he's not a finch rider he stands ten toes down if you kick off a guy stand out and say yeah that's how we do things around here and sometimes it actually helps the team by kicking off somebody who's cancer in the locker room i like a guy like that i don't care if you want to give guys third fourth fifth chances or you want to kick them off after any first minor inconvenience just be consistent the whole how you coach your team thing it's a different conversation for a different day let's get back on track quick reminder Demetrius got kicked off, dismissed, however you want to say it, and people still didn't know what was going on. Here's what some of the articles were saying back then. It's likely whatever Demetrius has done won't be repeated. There's a long-running story about Spurrier's three golden rules. No fighting, no cheating, and no drugs. In Summer's case, we don't know if any of the rules were violated, and now it looks like we may never know just how good of a football player he might have been at USC. Here's what Summer's old high school coach had to say about him being kicked off, and it's really sad. It's just predictable when they come from a tough environment like that. It's just hard to get away from it. But let's go back to Spurrier's three golden rules. No fighting, no cheating, and no drugs. Although Spurrier tried his best not to talk about it, news reports would come out the reason Summers got dismissed from the South Carolina football team was for failing a drug test. Not once, but twice. I could understand if you were upset at Steve Spurrier for kicking him off after one failed drug test, but two... Uh, it's hard to have sympathy. Because you know after he failed the first one, Spurrier's like, all right, listen up, buddy. Normally I don't do this, but we're going to give you another chance. You screw it up, you're gone. Spurrier gave him another chance, and he failed a second drug test, and he kicked him off the team. I'm curious. Let me know in the comment section. Would you have kicked off Demetrius Summers for failing two drug tests? It's a sticky situation because as a coach, you have your principles that you try to live by and coach by. And if you let a guy continue to just, I don't want to say walk over you, but I guess you'd say disrespect you by not believing you won't kick him off the team, then you really don't have control over your team or that said player. Regardless, he got kicked off South Carolina and he never played a nerd down in college football. He did enter the 2006 NFL Draft, went undrafted. However, he did get picked up by the Dallas Cowboys as an undrafted free agent, but nothing ever came out of it. He did join the Calgary Stampeders, which is the team in the Canadian Football League, and he played with them for a couple years up until 2010. I found this quote really fascinating. In an interview in 2008, he stated, Mary Jane messed up my life pretty much. I feel like if I never started smoking, I'd be in the NFL right now. It's crazy how doing one thing like that, smoking, it ruined his life. But whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Lightly Corsa says, not so fast, my friend. I know all you about to run to the comment section and say, oh my goodness, I can't believe he got kicked off of the team for that. I can't believe his career got ruined for that. That's nothing major. Everybody smokes nowadays. I can understand that argument to a certain extent. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're not done with his stories and we're not done with his problems. In 2017, Mr. Demetrius Summers would be sentenced to prison for trafficking drugs. What kind of drugs, you may ask? Well, let's just say in the most YouTube-friendly way possible, because they've been on my case recently. YouTube, by the way, this video is for educational and informational purposes only. It was a white powdery substance. Do as you please with that info. What's a better way to say this? Because I really want to tell y'all what it is. Oh yeah, we'll just say Coca-Cola. But not Coca-Cola, if you get what I'm trying to say. He got sentenced to eight years in prison, and that was in 2017. So now I think about it. He should be getting out. And yeah, he'll, he'll get out in 2025, right? You want to know it's crazy? And I got to tip my cap to the Lexington County Police Department. The way they caught him is because they had undercover agents buying from him. You see the mugshot. I don't want to kick a man when he's down. I don't want to judge a book by its cover. But he doesn't look good. He looks rough. I can't help but think about his old high school coach when he stated, when you're coming from an environment in which he came from, it's hard to get away from it. And I do believe how you're raised and how you're brought up in this life, I'd say for 99% of people, it affects how you're going to turn out. Granted, you do have some unicorns, but more times than not, 
if you grow up in a loving family with both parents in your life, you're going to turn out way better than somebody who grows up with one parent, grows up extremely poor, grows up in the quote-unquote hood, whatever you want to call it. Not to say that you can't make it out of that certain situation, because there's anomalies, there's unicorns, but we call them unicorns for a reason, it's rare. Life isn't fair, some people grow up better than others and may have an unfair advantage from the start. But what I've learned in this life, and it's how I've perceived every situation I've been in, you gotta play with the cards you're dealt. Just because you grow up in a situation like Demetrius Summers, it doesn't mean you have to continue to do those things that you're surrounded with. I'm not saying it's not easy to get away from that environment. What I'm saying is, is somebody's got to break the curse. Somebody has to say, you know what? I'm going to be the unicorn. I know there's some young men out there watching right now, and you are growing up in a similar environment as Demetrius Summers. The one piece of advice I'm going to give to you, whether you take it or not, that's up for you to decide, is number one, it's okay to be different, or number two, you don't have to blend in with your crowd, especially if they're doing bad things. I believe we all have a talent and we all have a gift. Don't waste it. Don't do a disservice to you, your friends, your family, and everybody that's counting on you. To Demetrius Summers, if you somehow, someway send this video, my brother, I hate how things have turned out, but I still think you can turn this shit wreck around. Wish you the best luck, my brother, and I hope things get better. I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts and all this down below, but I